And this tree here, this was our pear tree. It does not produce fruit anymore. We used to have an apple tree right here too. So strange, it's so symbolic, you know? How I think my dad left during the time this stopped producing fruit. So he pretty much stopped producing his love at the very same time. It's true. You are my brother. You are my sister. Made by the same God. Loved by the same heart. We've got to live love. We've got to give love. Okay. Can you go give Sissy a hug? Somebody just got out of time out for hitting. It's <coughs> giving you a hug, Symphony. Oh, um, <laughs> good job. Michaela, we had a few viewers who were happy to see you. Really? So Michaela's taking the kiddos out to Chick Fil A. Here you go, buddy. Here's some spending money. There's some spending money. You guys can share it. Half of that's yours. So you guys are going to Chick-fil-A? Yes, sir. Cool. Have fun. Nia's about to do her uh, baby league video. It's right out here. Come on, guys. I know you guys are going down the road, Michaela, but I got to remind you, no texting and driving. Of course. Of course. Okay. But my mom has to put it open on my phone. Oh, does she really? What is it? It's something that, like, it shuts shut down. down whenever I get over, like, a certain miles per hour. Oh, wow. All right. Come on, buddy. Come on. And me and the Dad? brothers are going Dad? to the old house. You guys are going to get to see where I used to live. That'll be kind of interesting. I almost put it in a previous vlog, but I decided to cut it. But today I'm going to let you guys see it because they're going to demolish the house. All right, let me get the kids in here. All right, we're turning on Indian Head Estates. We're about 30, 40 minutes from where I live right now. And we're headed to our old house. See it over there, guys? It is dilapidated and falling apart. I'm a little bit embarrassed to show you guys, but I'm gonna go ahead and get it on camera and show you guys where we used to live. Um, it's a lot worse than it used to be, that's for sure. <laughs> it's been it's been vacant for how long? Five years now. Five years? Has it been five years? Now, yeah. Andrew right here was the last yeah, person to live in the house. Is that ours? So my mom just sold this house, so we're here to get some furniture that's important to her. This is the last time we'll be at this house. There was a tree there. <laughs> there she is, guys. Isn't she beautiful? This house was actually decent at one point. Right now, it's not decent uh, by any means. And the door's wide open. <laughs> my family and I moved here from California when I was about nine years old. And I stayed here um, until 2005, I moved out for a little bit and I came back in and actually moved in with Nia for a couple months while I was in college. And um, we stayed here right after getting married um, while we were trying to get a house. So here we go, you guys ready to check this out? Times were hard. My dad left us when I was 15 years old and it was just my mom and five of us kids in this house and she had to raise us six at one point and then became five after Matthew moved out, my oldest brother. This is the kitchen, single-handedly painted by Matthew. Oh yeah, I remember that. <laughs> Matt painted all that. We did that to the mirror in a previous vlog. Mm -hmm. And that one, that was stupid of us, but. I want that one. So I stayed upstairs and so did Andrew. There's Andrew's old panda. Oh, we're Sam, AJ, Dad, 5, 14, 11. This is the game room, is what we called it. And this, is my old bedroom. This is bad guys. Birds are living in here now. Last time I came here, those birds flying around the room. This is my old bed, guys. My old bed. This is where Nia and I used to sleep when we first got married. This was our first bed. This is the actual bed. Yeah. Would you guys believe one day we came back from vacation and I jumped into this bed and it got all cuddly in it and I looked over that direction towards the wall and there was a snake wrapped up, coiled up in my bed, looking back at me, hissing. It was the scariest moment of my life, I think. 
I looked over there and I, I just couldn't believe what I was looking at. I was like, what? This can't be happening. And I just jumped out of the bed. So this is Andrew's old room. Oh, look, some paintings we did. My twin brother Michael did this you painting. Take those. Maybe I will. Fine. And I did that painting. That's why we came here to get this from my mom. She's had that since we were born, and it's really important to her. And this, can you guys guess whose room this was? Take a guess. This was my sister's room. I remember one time here in my sister's room, we played a prank on her. She was sleeping in her bed, and I hid under it before she got home. And I laid under there for probably 30 minutes. She finally got home, got on the bed, went to bed, and while she was sleeping, I was poking her mattress from underneath, like this, in different spots. She freaked out and zoomed out of the room. <laughs> She's like, guys, there's something under my bed. Oh, man, the good old days. We used to prank Rachel a lot. Can you imagine one girl living with five boys? <laughs> Is that your wide angle? Yeah. This is another piece of furniture my mom wants me to bring home. It goes with that mirror you guys just saw. She wants me to bring it home and refinish it or restore it. I don't know what's so special about it other than she's had it all her life. There's a drawer right there. She says it's the only piece of furniture from when her kids so still has. Oh, okay. Also, it's somewhat worth something. It's made of solid oak. Guess whose room this was? Can you guess by that chair right there? Yep, you guessed it. This was Matthew's room. He's a very girly man. Old newspapers. Did you collect these newspapers, Matt? Dad did. Oh, Dad did? I still have some of them. Oh, that's a Challenger? Yeah, it's from the Challenger store. Oh, wow. Look at this. Look at these old newspapers. Look how crazy this is, guys. This was on September 11th. My dad couldn't have collected this. We're not sure who saved this. Uh, Mom probably but here's an original newspaper from the day. Yeah. I guess my mom saved it. Oklahoma City bombing right there in the Fort Worth Star Telegram. Some other ones. Reagan shot. Gosh, Apollo 11. I found my old sketch pad. You guys want to see some old drawings I did? That was when I was learning how to draw a face. Learning about the anatomy of drawing faces. And some more faces. Yeah. Angle faces. Learning about angles. Learning eyes. Oh, that one's horrible. Look at all those noses. More faces. Huh, I wonder who that is. Look at those sharp noses I used to make. <laughs> so goofy. I drew noses like that. Like, people really have noses like that. Mr. Butthead? Really? This is a pretty cool drawing I was proud of. I even signed it. So proud I was of that. I drew my own hand holding a pencil. So now we're in the woods, is what we called it. This is right on the side of our house. As you see, the house is right behind me. We used to make forts out here, all of us boys. We'd come out here, with all tree houses. We used to play, like, um, capture the flag out here. We used to do quite a bit of stuff out here. What? I don't know what dug it. We dug this hole. No, a huge hole going sideways inside. Oh, really? Yeah. What else did we do out here, Andrew? I'm pretty much just built forts. Yeah, we built a lot of forts out here. It. We stayed the night out here several times yeah, in our forts fort. that we used to build out here. Do the electric cord, we had a heater. Yeah, we had a heater. We even had a TV out here, remember? Yeah. In the very back, we extended the extension cord all the way to the back of these woods. Good memories out here. That's the heater we were just referring to. There it is. It's really interesting being out here because everything is so much smaller than I remember it being. Like there's a massive tree out there we used to climb and it's gone, it died, but even the trunk is just so small that I just remember that tree towering over everything. We used to climb to the very top and just look over the world it seemed. And look at this hay bale. This thing was huge at one point. Not like how tiny it is. Do things just shrink over time or is it just, oh, yeah. we're getting bigger? These definitely shrink. I know, I'm just kidding about that. <laughs> Obviously this is actually really small. <laughs> My mom got this hay bale for us. She bought it from somebody so, just so we could play on. And this tree here, this was our pear tree. It does not produce fruit anymore. We used to have an apple tree right here too. So strange. It's so symbolic, you know? How I think my dad left during the time this stopped producing fruit. 
so he pretty much stopped producing his love at the very same time. It's true. So the story of my dad is this. He met another woman in 1999 on a trip that he took with just us boys. It was a short trip. I can't remember where we went, but on the way back home, where my mom was staying here, he stopped by this woman's house. She made us pancakes. It was early in the morning, and um, it'll be stuck in my memory forever because it was just something you don't do to your children. You don't bring them to your girlfriend's house when you have a mother and you're married. It just does not make sense. It was completely unnatural, obviously, and it's, it's ingrained in my memory forever that day. And when we got back home, he told us that we better not tell our mom. But of course, we ended up telling her because we were loyal kids and we loved our mom. And then my mom confronted him about it and then my dad freaked out about it and kind of threw us around a little bit, me and my twin brother for a rat ratting on him. And um, that was the day he left the house. Took off, left us all here. I think that, I'm pretty sure that was the very last day he was here. So that's the story pretty short. I have a lot of memories of pets here. We had several dogs that uh, we raced here and died here. We had a basset hound that actually died over here, I think in just an antifreeze, foaming from the mouth profusely. And us kids, we were home alone when it happened. We had no idea what to do, so we stuffed a water hose down his, his mouth, trying to rinse out his mouth. Uh, he ended up dying. And then we had a dog named Sonny. It was like a golden retriever type dog. Um, I can't remember how he died, but I remember we buried him right there, right on the side of the house. <laughs> um, then we had a dog named Snowball. She, he's just a big, hairy, white dog. And I came home from school one day, found her dead on the back porch, uh, up against the window, just dead. And I was home alone. I can't remember why. It was just me. But I had no idea what to do with the dog. It was too big to bury. So I ended up building like a big bonfire on the side of the house and put the dog on it and um, burned her. <laughs> um, that took me about three days to completely get her burned away. <laughs> that was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> um, and then we had Ginger. Uh, she was my favorite dog. Uh, I can't remember what kind of dog she was. She was just like a, um, a black nose cur like the puppy we just got. And I saw her get shot from upstairs window. She was like, oh no, I was downstairs. She was running through the pasture and um, the pasture owner just shot her with a, a rifle and she just took off running. I spent the whole night looking for her. I remember crying about that one. That one's pretty emotional for me because I was so close to her. And then she, came, she showed up the next morning on the back porch dead. Not sure if he brought her to us or the dog made her way back home. Yeah, so a lot of memories of dogs and animals here. That was Matthew interviewing me for his class project. So I'm just putting the furniture in the car now. I think we're about to leave. I had a lot of dreams here. I remember having dreams of becoming famous actually. Having a band is how I hoped to become famous. Um, I did start a band. I also had dreams of becoming a wedding photographer. It's interesting because I remember here in this house dreaming of being a photographer, a wedding photographer. Um, Matthew and I actually used to take pictures out here all the time when we first started. I started out with a video camera. I was taking pictures with a video camera. It took like one megapixel pictures. It was ridiculous. And that dream has become realized. I'm a wedding photographer now. It's interesting because I clearly remember thinking that there's no way I could ever shoot weddings. I didn't ever see my see myself doing that having the confidence to be able to shoot weddings and um, just shoot uh, photographing on that scale but I'm doing it and I've shot over a hundred weddings now I have several schedules for this year and they just keep coming in the inquiries keep coming in it's just awesome to be able to look back and remember that um, I had a dream <laughs> and um, I made it happen this is where I dreamed guys this is the place I had my dreams. This is where I used to exercise, on this bench right here. I used to sit here, play guitar, sit on this bed, do my schoolwork. Stay there? Yep. Yeah. Door pass is kind of depressing. 
I don't really regret any of it. It's brought me where I am today. I'm perfectly happy where I am today. And even though my dad left us all here, if it wasn't for him bringing us here, <clears throat> I would have never met Nia, would have never had Symphony, would have never had Abram, and would have never went viral and met you guys. Well, that's not necessarily true. So, I appreciate my dad a little bit, about that much. Although I do have one last thing to say to this house.